man, it was it was awesome. Um, you know, just my parents and everything they sacrificed, and then um, you know the nurturing they had to do, and the you know the work that my dad put in to to groom us and the players, me and my brother also. Um, you know, it was it was a special moment. It was like a full circle moment. So, um, you know, just really enjoyed the moment with my family and friends and. You know, after that, I mean, it was it was a little while before I got to go play, but it was it was back to work at that point. He kind of um, paved the way for me. Um, not only put you know helped put Virginia on the map, you know our home state, but also you know I was in the background going, "Hey, I'm here too." You know, while he was going through the process, so um, he kind of put me on the map also. So I, I have to give him some credit, but at the same time, I did beat. You know, they 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 were always putting us first. So it was, you know, if there was something financially that needed to be done at home, but you know, there was a tournament that we needed to play in. I mean, I don't know if it was the smartest move in the world, but they always, you know, sacrificed, you know, their wants for our needs and and putting us in the right positions and putting us in the right situations to succeed. I remember that call. I remember, you know not getting any sleep that night, um, you know, trying to catch an early flight to San Diego. Um, I, and I, I remember, you know, just as a whole, just being nervous about the opportunity. You know, I, you know obviously it's something you wait for your whole life, but um, actually it happening and you having to perform. And it, there, was, there was definitely some nerves there, but, um, you know, the jitters were something I had to shake because we were kind of in the same situation this year's team is where, a lot of young guys playing well uh, in the playoff hunt. And, um, you know, when you get to the big leagues, it's, it's business. So you have to, you have to perform. And um, I just remember it being probably one of the better times of my life. I, you know, some of the young guys that I came up with are still friends today, which is, um, you know, you don't know it at the time, but you're, you're making, you know, lifelong friends. I think throughout my career, you know, I thought back on uh, coaching moments, some of the, uh, you know, Good coaches, great coaches I had, um, you know, coming up and, and Bob Melvin to this day is still one of my favorite, um, favorite managers that I played for. Um, just the way that, you know, and, and also some of my older teammates that kind of showed me what being a major leaguer was all about. Um, you know, some of those relationships were all, you know, were all in the Arizona Diamondback uniform. So, you know, I look back on the player I was molded in and coaches um arizona was the starting point of that and, and i was i'm grateful that i had that opportunity i have to break that into two two separate um i think the best overall pitcher i faced um you know throughout my career is clayton kershaw um i don't know why that dude never let up on me but uh you know all throughout my career i always you know had tough at bats against him um but yeah, Clayton Kershaw's got to be my number one. But as far as stuff, I mean, it's a shame that um, he won't be pitching. They didn't pitch in the playoffs. But um, Jacob Degrom, man, uh, it's it's a special talent. It's probably the the most electric pitcher I have faced. Um, if he could stay healthy, man, it, you know, baseball needs guys like that because he's you know a general generational talent on the mound. Um, you know, I just I hope he gets healthy and shows everybody that. He's that guy. Well, I think I think the D backs, um, they were waiting on some young talent, which you know finally showed up and, and played well. Um, you know, I, I see some of these organizations now and and they're starting to draft, you know, not only high ceiling talent, but high floor talent with guys that they know can, are gonna play at the big league level and can contribute, and also guys that you know can can not only contribute at the big league level, but if they're you know, if they mature properly, they're going to turn into superstars, you know, guys like Corbin Carroll. So um, I think that's, you know, they had an influx of young talent, also brought in some uh, some veteran pieces. I, I, you know, I love the Tommy Pham move, uh, bringing him in, a guy with a little bit of, you know, edge to him. Um, Evan Longoria, also a guy who's played in the playoffs. Um a, you know, a veteran presence. So they brought in the, the right pieces, but they also um, 
have young players who, who turned out to be good major leaguers. And on the other hand, Texas, um, I think Texas, they signed two, two of the more professional players um, a few years ago with, with Marcus Simeon and, and uh, Corey Seager. And I think those guys have changed the, not only the face of that lineup, but um, just the face of the clubhouse, the face of the organization. I think the way those guys go about their business is, you know, the, the way you want to see it as, as a front office. Um, and then they, they have pitching. I mean, pitching, pitching wins ball games. Um, I love the addition of Jordan Montgomery, just a, a solid, you know, solid pitcher who, you know, when he gets high, he can pitch like he has lately. Um, and then the addition of Scherzer, you know, to kind of anchor the rotation. Um, you know, I think they did a good job at the, at the all-star or at the trade deadline. And they, I mean, they already had the pieces in place to go around Seager and Simeon. You know, even when I was playing there, you know, a long time ago, probably 10 to 12 years ago, um, when I was playing there, you you always heard the buzz about, wow, well, back in 2001, back in 2001, we loved that team. So they, they've they been kind of hanging on to that 2001 World Series team. I, I think they needed a new team, you know, a new team to, to rally behind. And I think they've been hungry for, for this run for, you know, would you say 22 years? So um, I think the fans are hungry. It's going to mean a lot to them to to have World Series here in town. Um, they've been waiting for it for a long time. So I'm I'm hoping that people show up and, and give that home field advantage. I think these guys are just young enough and have you know enough edge about them that you know it it could work in their favor. Um, they've been the underdogs in every series of of this playoffs too, and they've proven proven. Uh, Proving the doubters wrong, I guess. So um, I don't see this being any different. I mean, I think, you know, if it does go the other way to, to Texas, which everybody thinks it will, I mean, it's because Texas was a little more of a veteran team and, and they outperformed them. But um, I, I think that's definitely an advantage to be the underdog. The guy who's come in, uh, had the success he's had, um, performed, at, you know, you know, in the biggest spots, um, you could possibly be in in baseball, you know, last night's performance uh, and throughout the playoffs. Um, when you look at it on paper, he looks like, the, you know, the the perfect face of your franchise. And I, I you know, th throughout people in baseball that come in, come into contact with him. I personally haven't, but you hear great things. You hear, you know, he prepares well, um, you know, he sleeps, eats and breathes baseball. He's a baseball guy. So, um, I think what we're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. I think he's going to be, um, I think he should be in Arizona for a long time. And I think he's going to be a pretty special player. I played in the same division just a few years ago. Um, you, you could see the talent there. I think for some people, it just takes longer to make those adjustments. And I, you know, the talent was hundred percent always there. Um, I remember games he had against us when I was in Anaheim that I was like, this guy is special, but, um, to put it all together is a little bit tougher, and I think it's coming together for him. Whether it's you know at 22 years old or at you know 31, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you put it together at some point. And what he what he did this past series is um, obviously it's a record, but um, you know kind of anchoring that team and getting them to a World Series was was fun to watch. Oh, it's been a while since the, the Rangers have been in the, in the uh, World Series. So I think the crowd will be excited. I think there'll be some nerves on the Arizona side. And, um, you know, with the veteran presence over there in that Texas uh, Rangers clubhouse, I think they take game one. Um, I think the Texas Rangers win the World Series uh, on the backs of their pitching. Um, you know, I think that their pitching has been pretty good throughout the playoffs. And, um I think the series ends 4-2. Um, I, I just love watching Corey Seager. Um, I think he ends up being the guy. He went through a, a quick um, cold spell there uh, last series, but I think his bat starts to heat up, and um, you know he, he he's probably the reason they win it all. I'm waiting for Christian Walker to 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 get hot. I've seen him, the great hitter. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna probably break out this series. Um, Obviously, Corbin Carroll. Um, look for Grayell to be kind of a, a staple in the, their lineup. 
Um, I think he's going to hit. Um, then you obviously got Simeon Garcia. I don't know if he can keep doing what he, he did last series, but I think he's he's a big piece of it. Um, and uh, my guy at first base. Why am I drawing blank? Low. I love Low. He's gonna he's gonna be cool as a cucumber in that in that uh, hostile atmosphere, and I think he's gonna have a big series. I think I think everybody throughout baseball has been waiting on this one, but we're we're waiting on the Seattle Mariners to to turn the corner. I know they made the postseason last year, just barely missed this year. Um, you know, it, it was a younger roster two, a couple of years ago. It's, they're starting to a few of them starting to become veterans. Uh, they added a couple of younger pieces this year um, that came up and had a little bit of an impact. So um, I'm I'm going with the Mariners, man. I feel like. There, you know, I've obviously been in that clubhouse last year. I was a part of the team for a little bit, but they have so much young talent there and, and great pitching. I think uh, I look for them to turn the corner. Honestly, a few like the 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 base thing. I think as a player, it's something they probably got used to, probably by the end of spring training or you know, you know, early in the season. So I don't think that was as big of a uh, change. The the pitch clock, I think. Um, had a definite effect on the game. Obviously, the games were faster. Um, the pickoff rule, we saw stolen bases go up, which is more exciting for fans. Um, you know, we saw a guy steal what <laughs> seventy bases. So, it, I mean, I, if you're a fan of that, I think it, you know, it had the right effect on the game. So, um, through a year, I think, you know, the skeptics are kind of leaning towards it's good for the game. So, um, hey, it, it's it's the new era of baseball. So. Um, you know, enjoy it. <laughs> I think it should be revisited. Um, I, my opinion, I don't, I don't know how much it holds, but from what I'm seeing, uh, you know, you look at the Dodgers and the Braves who are two of the better teams in baseball all year long. Um, they, they lost in their first series. And I think part of that is because of the, the buy, you know, having a buy and, and not playing for, I think it was five days or so. Um, baseball is one of those sports when you miss five days, no matter how hard you try with scrimmages and facing my pitching, you're going to come out flat. And um, I don't know that the actual fix is going to help anything. You don't want to take away a playoff team and adding one would kind of be crazy now. And almost everybody makes the playoffs. Um, so I don't know what the fix is, but you know, I, I think it's it's bad for baseball for the best team to look the way that the best teams to look the way that the Braves, the Dodgers, and the Orioles looked. And they, I mean, they really came out flat and in a five game series, it's hard to rebound from it. I'm not real sure why they're calling a sweeper. We've been calling a slider for forever. I don't know why the name changed. Um, but it's the sweeper now um and it's it's the same as the slider it looks like a fastball for a long time um it's thrown at a higher velocity than a curveball and the longer it looks like a fastball and then breaks the better off the pitch is i mean it fools hitters um but i still call it a slider <laughs> but everybody calls it the sweeper well i was kind of an old guy at the time you know, when when everything kind of changed over and um everybody started talking about launch angle and exit, exit velocity I was kind of stuck in my old ways, so I, I didn't really make an adjustment to my training. Um, but if that's if that's what's being judged, uh, you know, the players have to adjust. Um, as far as analytics, I think I think they're great for the game. Um, in moderation, I think you can't lean too hard on analytics. I mean, you can lean hard on analytics. Uh, great ball clubs have done it. Um, I just think we can't lose you know, lose sight of the, you know, the actual game and the, and what guys are doing on the field. We can't link completely on analytics, but I think the best teams that are doing it right now are, are finding a way to mesh both sides of the, you know, both sides of the coin. They're using analytics um, to gain information and still, you know, using the pure, the purity of baseball, the, the, the physical acts of baseball and, um, you know, the eye test. There's still, there's still, you still have to pass the eye test, but analytics will tell you a lot. And I think the the mesh of the two makes makes us great. I mean, 
You know, that's that's what makes great players.